Let's jump right into today's tutorial. I promise you, it will be exciting. First, you'll be working with WAN 2.2 for the very first time. In a workflow that's been specially optimized to replicate viral TikTok dances through motion capture. An essential step if you want to boost your reach on social media. Second, I'll give you a brand new workflow that lets you test the LoRa model you trained back in the second tutorial. You'll be able to directly compare the results and find out which of the 10 models performs the best and which ones might have been overtrained. On top of that, we'll also take a quick detour into the world of machine learning. This extra bit of knowledge will help you choose your training images much more effectively so that your LoRa delivers the best possible results later on. So, grab yourself a coffee, sit back, and let's jump right in together. Let's start with one of the most exciting innovations in the recent AI industry. WAN 2.2, an open source video generation model. In today's workflow, we'll be using it to replicate TikTok dances. The principle is simple. We upload a video whose movements we want to imitate. With the help of depth capture, those movements are precisely extracted. Then, in the image section, we upload a reference picture of our influencer. Important. The picture should look as similar as possible to the very first frame of the video. You have two options here. Adapt the image to the video or adapt the video to the image. For example, by cropping it in CapCut. Here, you can see the key settings in the workflow. The two most important areas for you are the prompt section. Adjust the core prompt of your influencer here and also describe the movements and environment. By core prompt, I mean the shortest but most precise description of her appearance without unnecessary details. The One 2.2 Fun Sampler node. These are the settings that gave me the best results personally. I especially recommend enabling TeachH. This saves the intermediate steps of the first generation, which makes the second run much faster. Once you've adjusted your settings, simply hit Run. Since some people in the community are having trouble picking the right images for LoRa training, it's about time I explain what's actually happening during the process. Don't worry, I'll keep it as simple as possible. At its core, machine learning, and therefore LoRa training, isn't as mysterious as it sounds. You provide the algorithm with so-called data objects. In the case of LoRa training, these objects consist of an image, a prompt, and a lot of additional metadata. The algorithm then tries to create the best possible function out of these data objects. In statistics, we call this a density function. The goal, to be able to reconstruct the training data as accurately as possible. That finished function is your LoRa model. With this function, your LoRa you can later interpret new data. Here's how it works. You select your model, input a prompt, hit run, and get a brand new image. It's very similar to a mathematical function you might remember from school. You plug a value into f of x and you get an output. Now, for this density function to work well, you need a balanced training dataset. That means the algorithm must have enough references across the images to understand relationships. Example, if your data set only contains front views, the algorithm has no reference for a back view. Two things can happen. It still tries to generate a back view, but it looks different every time. Or it never generates a back view at all because the function is overtrained on front views. The bottom line, your data set should be designed so that the ratios between the reference images are as balanced as possible. A great example, and one I personally recommend, is the 360-degree workflow. 
I used it to capture my influencer in close-ups, medium shots, and full body shots, all from every angle. These 360-degree images are perfectly balanced because each one serves as a reference for every other. That way, the AI can easily connect a close-up back right view to a close-up right view and also to a medium back view. At the same time, there's still enough room for interpretation, which helps avoid overtraining. I also recommend adding a few images from different camera perspectives, two to four different poses, a maximum of three facial expressions and several close-ups. Those close-ups slightly overtrain the face, which is a good thing. It keeps your influencer consistent. But enough theory. I've trained a LoRa model with exactly this kind of data set. Now let's test how well it performs in the second workflow. There isn't much to explain for this workflow. You only need to adjust two nodes. The most important part is the prompt section. I recommend using three different prompts. Your core prompt. A prompt where your influencer has big cat ears. A prompt where she has horns. Why three prompts? With the first prompt, you can see which LoRa or density function interprets your influencer the best. With the two fun prompts, cat ears and horns, you can test whether some models are overtrained. If they are, these extra details often won't show up at all. Here you can choose your 10 loras from the 10 errors. Once you've generated all three prompts, overlay the images and decide which LoRa performs best overall. Here's an example with one of my older LoRas. You can clearly see that starting from Epoch 8, it became overtrained. With every additional Epoch, the horns were generated worse and worse, until by Epoch 10, they didn't appear at all anymore. Congratulations. You've just completed Chapter 1. Today, you worked with One 2.2 for the very first time and learned how to generate TikTok dances for social media. You now understand exactly what happens during LoRa training and how to select the perfect images for your dataset. And with the final workflow, you now have a tool to efficiently test your LoRas. By the way, you can find all the workflows from this chapter in our Discord community. There, you'll get access to my complete workflows, templates, and scripts, and one-on-one -on -one support if you ever get stuck. So, if you're not a member yet, now's the best time to join. With that said, see you in the next video.